Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to be talking about our beautiful neighbor, the Moon. We're going to discuss the magnetosphere that once existed on the Moon, and what scientists have recently discovered in regards to its unfortunate demise. Let's talk about this, and welcome to What the Math. So when it comes to magnetosphere around our planet, we think today that it's one of the main reasons why not only is our planet habitable and actually has liquid water on the surface, while obviously possessing a lot of other features that allow life here to exist, but also this is one of the main reasons we think objects like Mars look the way they do. In other words, one of the reasons why Mars no longer has water and um, is technically not habitable anymore, at least by our uh, earthly standards, is actually the loss of magnetosphere. Now, we've already been able to explain how Mars lost its magnetosphere, but for many years now, scientists knew that once upon a time, our moon also had really strong magnetosphere. So strong, as a matter of fact, that if we were to compare it to the magnetosphere of Earth today, it seems to have been at least twice stronger. And the scientists are not entirely certain how it suddenly disappeared and when this actually happened. And furthermore, we're not even certain um, if the moon actually possessed something else on the surface when it did have a magnetosphere, such as, for example, some sort of a rudimentary atmosphere and potentially certain places where liquid water could exist. But at least one recent paper that came out not so long ago was able to finally establish when we believe the moon lost its magnetosphere, and most importantly, what caused the magnetosphere to exist to begin with, and then what caused the magnetosphere to kind of disappear with time. All of this is actually based on a relatively brilliant analysis of the lunar regolith, or essentially moon rocks, that were brought to us from various Apollo missions that happened over the years. And most of these rocks were unfortunately um, a little bit too old, but in those rocks we were able to establish that once upon a time, moon had really really strong magnetosphere. Essentially by looking at those rocks and by measuring how various metallic samples settled inside the rock when the magnetosphere was present, the scientists were able to establish that approximately 4.2 billion years ago, when the moon was recently created, the strength of magnetosphere was about 100 microtesla. Whereas if you were to do the same analysis with a typical rock here on planet Earth today, you would discover that the magnetosphere is about 50 microtesla, so approximately half as much. In other words, back then the moon seems to have had twice the magnetosphere strength of what we have on Earth today, and this was not in any way caused by the Earth's magnetosphere, it was actually the magnetosphere present on the moon itself. But we also know that Moon today, just like Mars, has no magnetosphere at all. So something happened in between that uh, caused the Moon to lose everything that it used to have, turning it basically into barren rock that it is. And to try to understand what may have happened, we need to understand how Moon was created and where Moon was positioned early in its existence. And so here, only a few hundred million years after the collision of so-called Theia with planet Earth, we believe that this is when the moon started to be kind of formed around the planet in the region that was very likely um, somewhat similar to the rings of Saturn. So basically we think that the moon kind of solidified from this ring that used to be present here after the collision. And following this, after a few hundred million years, the moon was already a single object, but it was still orbiting much closer to Earth than it is today. As a matter of fact, the distance at some point was very similar to the distance where we have our GPS satellites today. And because of this proximity, both the Moon and the Earth had a lot of gravitational effects on each other. Now obviously for Earth, just like today, it caused very high tidal effects, a lot of uh, gravitational disturbances, possibly a lot of volcanism was caused by this as well, and of course a lot of earthquakes. But the Moon also experienced very similar effects, even though it was already very likely tidally locked. And because of these gravitational effects that were caused by being so close to planet Earth, we believe that the internal structure of the Moon was much more active and very likely completely molten and also um, dynamic compared to what it is today. In other words, it resembled something similar to what Earth looks like today, with a lot of activity on the inside and a lot of interactions between various layers that then end up causing what we call magnetosphere today. 
And so this proximity to Earth allowed the Moon to have a relatively strong magnetosphere for at least a couple of billion years. But then eventually, as the Moon moved away from Earth, as it actually is doing today, it's technically slowly moving away from Earth even today, the effects from Earth started to diminish and this um, actually prevented the Moon from maintaining the very powerful magnetosphere that it used to have, simply because the gravitational effects from our planet were not significant enough to maintain the field itself. So approximately two and a half billion years ago, the inner part of the moon started to crystallize and slowly solidified becoming what it is today, which is when the moon officially kind of lost its magnetosphere. But all of this was kind of a speculation until very recently, and one of the reasons we actually now believe this is kind of what happened is because some of the lunar rocks we brought from the Apollo missions turn out to be much younger than the other rocks. As a matter of fact, most of the rocks we brought were about 4.2, 4.3 billion years old, and they did show that the magnetosphere back then was much stronger. But then it turns out that some of the rocks we've collected were actually from the period when the moon experienced a relatively large collision that melted a lot of the material on the surface. And in a sense, this reset the clock for some of the samples that were collected. And so when the scientists measured the age of the sample, they realized that the rocks they were measuring were only about 1 billion years old, which allowed the scientists studying these rocks to create a timeline for how the magnetosphere changed over uh, several billion years. They discovered that approximately two and a half billion years ago, that's when the magnetosphere started falling dramatically. It actually decreased to about 10 microtesla, meaning that it decreased by about 10 times from the original value. You. And then, about 1 billion years ago, it was already as low as 0.1 microtesla, meaning that it was basically almost completely non-existent. Which of course allowed the scientists to now present a very strong argument for not only how the magnetosphere changed, but also why. And the biggest explanation here is of course the distance from planet Earth. As the moon moved away farther and farther away from Earth, so did the effects from Earth change dramatically making the moon a lot less likely to be able to maintain the magnetosphere and essentially turning it into what it is today. And just to make sure and confirm their results, the scientists actually conducted a, a relatively simple and somewhat um, realistic experiment here on planet Earth. They took some of these samples and they heated them up to the point where the rocks would start experiencing conditions very similar to what it would be like if there was a sudden uh, meteorite strike or essentially if the rock suddenly melted. And then they decided to see what happens to these rocks once they solidified, just to see if the um, values that they would get would actually be similar to values of what we have here on Earth today. And just as you would expect, the results they got from this experiment confirmed that these samples were very accurate and essentially what they were able to create in the lab was a very realistic way of measuring the magnetosphere because even after erasing the magnetic record from the exposed rocks, the artificially created magnetosphere allowed the rocks to solidify in the same way that they did back then when the moon had magnetosphere. In other words, this confirmed that all of the Apollo rocks um, are very, very accurate in helping us determine what the magnetosphere was like back then when the moon was created. Now, we're still not entirely clear on how the moon influenced the Earth's magnetosphere and also um, how it may have changed back then, but we're also not entirely sure what other effects Earth had on the Moon uh, to begin with. The early interaction between Earth and the Moon is still a bit of a mystery and studying it and also understanding it will one day help us figure out why exactly is it that Earth is so different from other planets around and what exactly should we be looking for out there in outer space if we wanted to find another planet similar to Earth, possibly with life or possibly a planet for us to one day settle on. Because as Mars shows us, Sometimes some of the planets, even if they're in a habitable zone and have relatively big size and possibly even other materials that should technically make it habitable, don't really live to be habitable planets. They don't end up being anything that we would want to settle one day. So hopefully by studying the moon in more detail, we'll be able to figure out what made Earth so special. But until we find out more, that's really it. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye-bye.